What's up guys? Now you lot have seen me drive all sorts of amazing cars on this channel over time. You know that I'm a fan of the electric vehicle and you can't be a fan of electric vehicles without loving Teslas, surely. And you've seen me drive the Model S, you've seen me drive the big SUV Model X, but I was always still to get my hands on Tesla's mass market EV, the much lower priced, much more affordable Model 3. Well, today, that's happening. Yeah, this is the car that Tesla hopes will bring this electric vehicle technology to the masses. And over the next couple of days, I'm lucky enough to have this particular one at my disposal. I've got a journey to do of many hundreds of miles dotting all around the country, so I should be able to give you guys a pretty good idea of what life's like living with this kind of thing. Right, first port of call for me today is to go from here, right on the edge of London at Heathrow, up to Birmingham for a dinner where I'm speaking at an event this evening. So let's just plug that into the sat-nav. That's the hotel I'm staying at in Birmingham. So that tells me that it's 115 miles away. It's going to take me 2 hours 38 minutes. And when I get there, I'll have 32% of energy left in the battery. Now, that's pretty good. It's fine because I can charge it up again when I get there. I've got 260-ish miles in the battery right now. It's not fully charged, but that just happens to be what the state of charge is right now. So plenty of mileage, plenty of energy in the car to get me where I need to be without having to worry about it at all. Range anxiety shouldn't come into this journey. So let's give the car a run on the motorway, see what it's like. So let's talk about what this thing is actually like to drive. The truth is, it's easy is probably the first thing that jumps to mind. As you walk up to the car, it recognises the mobile phone in your pocket. It opens the doors for you. When you get in, it turns the car on through exactly the same method. You don't have to do anything. You simply pop the lever behind the steering wheel down into drive, and off you go. It's as simple as that. And I think that's probably the thing that sums this car up. It's easy. Everything just works. It's intuitive. This giant screen in the middle just kind of works. It's a big improvement, in fact, from the last time that I was in a Tesla. The Model S and the Model X both have similar kind of setups, but they were laggy. They were not as good as an iPad, is probably how I would describe it. We've all become used to almost perfection with that kind of technology, with things like iPads and tablets, and yet the one in the Model S, the early one in the Model S, probably wasn't just wasn't quite as good as that well this one this one is as good as that this one works really well it's fast the operating system seems great it's it's absolutely self-intuitive it's customizable which I also love you can set the screen up to how you want it to to have the features on it that you want to have on it well we made it I'm in Birmingham now uh, disappointingly though the car park at the hotel which I was almost sure would have an electric charge point, doesn't have one. I had loads of energy left, but I was planning on charging the thing overnight while I'm in the hotel because tomorrow morning, very early tomorrow morning, I've got another 100 miles to get from here to uh, Newport um, at Celtic Manor um, for another event tomorrow. Tesla's charging network, I have to say, is brilliant. Every time I've ever had a Tesla, never had a problem, it's been great. The charging infrastructure around the rest of the country that's outside of the Tesla's own network is just too flaky right now. To get electric cars really off the ground, to get this mass uptake that Tesla are trying to achieve with this very car, perhaps one of the things we really need to accelerate development of is the charging infrastructure around it. At the moment, the car technology, in my mind, is far outstripping the, the, the pace of development of the infrastructure, the network of chargers needed to support this lot. Anyway, I've got to go in, get changed and uh, go to this dinner very, very early. I think probably something like five o'clock tomorrow morning, we'll be back in the car for the next leg. Okay, so given that we're in the middle of January, uh, the car has actually lost about four miles worth of range overnight. Um, presumably just because of temperatures mostly. Uh, I've just put my destination in, which is Celtic Manor, right on the edge of Wales, as I say. Um, it's 100 miles from here. We've got 100 mi 105 miles of range in the car. It's not enough 
and so we are going to have to add in some charging stops. Okay, so the car now tells me that if I stop at the supercharger at Hopwood Park, uh, that's going to, I need to stop there, I'll have 28% by the time I get there. If I stop for 15 minutes and plug into the supercharger, uh, that'll then give me plenty of charge to then get to my destination with 21% left when I finally arrive in two hours time. Um, it's a really clever, clever system and what happens is when you go to one of these superchargers, this is the one that it's sending me to, look, I click on that, it can tell me that there are three out of the four stalls at Hopwood Park which will be available or currently available. There's 130 kilowatts of max charge, that's a rapid supercharger. Um, it tells you the costs of those of course. Costs are very, very low. It tells me what other features are available at that service station as well. So I've made the decision, knowing this is the case, that I was going to skip breakfast at the hotel. I'll get straight in the car, get on the road, I'll head straight to Hopwood Park and I'll get myself some breakfast there while the car's charging. So moments like this can seem frustrating and you know, I was frustrated when I arrived last night to find there were no charge points here. But the reality is it doesn't take much adaptation to get over that. And I think your mindset gradually changes anyway if you become an electric vehicle owner to that kind of degree. And the reality is that for most people, for almost everybody, this will never be an issue anyway. Because 99.9% .9 of the time you own an electric vehicle, you're plugging it in at home at your own charger. Waking up every single morning with a completely full tank, if you like. have made it to Celtic Manor in plenty of time. It was actually a totally trouble-free journey. I have to say, I really enjoyed the experience. Honestly, I genuinely did. Now look, I am one of the biggest petrol heads out there. You know that, you guys know that. I love nothing more than the sound of a screaming V8 or a V10 or even a V12. Come on, that's amazing. But I also love technology and this car is absolutely packed full of the very latest of it. And that's what I love about it. The journey was trouble free and easy because the technology made it that way. The technology took over a lot of my responsibilities, a lot of my duties. It made it comfortable, it made it entertaining. You know, it was a really enjoyable experience. That's what I take away from that first long motorway journey. Not that I was struggling with range anxiety, I know this is only one journey. I even came across the problem of a charger not being available last night when I thought it was going to be but it didn't really have a massive impact on me because the car told me what I needed to do to achieve the journey in the time that I needed to achieve it and it was right. Right, all finished over in Wales, now time to head home. That is another 120 miles, but the car's been on charge here in the car park whilst I've been working uh, this morning, so we're all good to get home without any stops. Should be seamless. over the years to drive some of the world's best cars, some of the world's fastest cars, but nothing comes close to the experience of the acceleration of this thing. It's mind-blowing. There's no way I can even do it justice by trying to describe it to you right now. Take a test drive. It will just pop your head. <laughs> now I can already hear loads of you screaming at the screens, shouting, you know, yeah, but what about the the noise, the smells, the vibrations of a, of a loud, obnoxious, kind of rude, raw, gas-guzzling V8 supercar. And I totally hear you. I mean, look, if I had my dream garage, it would 100% have something like that in there. But you know what? It would also definitely have one of these because this ticks a lot of other boxes. It's insanely fast, and yet I can fit the whole family in there. It's comfortable. 
It's genuinely got loads of things that I wish other cars had. Tesla have been the first to bring this kind of electric vehicle technology to the marketplace. They have stolen a march on all of the big worldwide manufacturers. And you know what I always say to people if they're thinking about going towards an electric vehicle, an electric car, I always say to people with my closing sentiment on these things, don't buy one just to save the planet. You know, this isn't the solution for everybody. It's not the perfect solution for all of the world's problems. No one's saying it is. What you do get though, by buying one of these, is an incredible car, an incredible gadget. I mean, I'm a massive gadget lover. That's why I want one of these, because it ticks all the boxes of my insane passion to have the latest, greatest thing. This is a bit of incredible software on wheels, and I love that about it. Don't buy an electric car to save the planet. Buy one because on many, many levels, they are just better. It's got more space for its size. The performance is incredible. That launch off the line will surprise anybody sat next to you at the traffic lights. <laughs> The ease of use is just like the way an iPad works. It just works seamlessly with everything. And yeah, Tesla have by far the best charging network, the most integrated into the car software itself. The fastest network, the biggest network in many parts of the world too. And yeah, I know the rest of the world is catching up, but right now, this is pretty much as good as you can get for this kind of money. So yeah. Go and buy one.